Younger Artists, and welcome back to another painting tutorial with Young at Art. My name is Alexis, and today we're going to be painting our winter sky painting. If this is your first time painting with us, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And if this is not your first time, thank you so much for coming back. I hope that you enjoy this painting tutorial as much as you enjoyed the last one. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's go over our materials really quick for what you have to have to paint this. Um, your art kit came with almost everything, but there's just a couple of things that you're going to need to add from wherever you are painting from. So let's move our example out of the way for right now. In your painting kit, you got a blank canvas, a big brush, and a little brush. You got five colors of paint, a tealy aqua color, dark blue, well, brilliant blue, uh, magenta, a campground green, and white. You will need to add to that um, a paper towel or napkin to clean your brush, a cup of water. I use an old cleaned out jam jar. And then something round. Now I'm using just a, a party cup that we have, that we had. Um, you can use a coaster. You can use the top of a peanut butter jar. Um, you can use anything like that. You're just gonna need a stencil for something round. If you don't have a stencil, um, you can just freehand it and it's gonna be just fine. We're gonna make it through. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use that round object. Now again, I'm using a cup. Um, you could use a peanut butter jar um, top if you wish. You could eat all kinds of things, whatever you have that's round. I'm gonna take my round thing and I'm gonna place it in the top fourth quadrant of my canvas. And I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of hanging off the edge a little bit. I don't want it, I don't want to be able to see the side here. I'm going to scooch it off the edge a little bit. And I've left about a finger-ish of space on the top. So once I have that, I'm going to take my pencil, which I've also now realized I didn't tell you you need a pencil, but you do. Sorry about that. And I am just going to trace that there. Ta-da! We have a little space for our moon. Um, if you don't have... A circular item that you can use as a, a template. Go ahead and just create the most of a circle. If you want to cut out of a piece of paper first so it feels more round to you, um, if you're, you know, or if you just want to live your life and draw it on there, go for it. Um, but you just need to quadrant off, quadrant off. You need to create a space for your moon. <laughs> so now that we have a space for our moon, we're going to go ahead and start painting. Um, we are going to start by uh, kind of giving ourselves uh, some some roadmaps to work within. Um, but before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some painting 101. You'll notice maybe just by looking at your pots of paint that some of your colors are thicker than others. And you can tell on my um, palette here that these are more spread out than these. These colors here are just a different brand and so their formulation is a little different and it makes them a little thicker. Um, to work with them successfully we're just going to make sure that we have a little bit of water on our brush and that our paints become a little soupier. We want our paints to be like a um, kind of like a creamy soup um, and that will help our paints go on smoothly and blend together when we want them to blend together. Um, additionally, anytime we paint, we want to make sure that our brush is just a little bit damp. So I always clean, get my, my brush wet in the water. I dab it off on my paper towel and then I test it on the back of my hand. If it leaves the back of my hand wet, but does not create drips, then that's perfect. Um, if it still feels too dry and I can't see any water on my hand at all, it needs a little bit more water. If it's dripping, it needs a little bit less. You can figure that part out. Um, all right, so there we have it. So um, I am going to start in sort of an unorthodox fashion, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna start with my wet brush. And remember, these are thicker paints, so I don't really have to dab it off very much. And I'm going to swirl some water in with my dark blue paint. 
just to make sure that it goes on nice and smoothly. It blends easily and it's just a little easier to work with when it's a little, and I think I need a little bit more here. There we go. If you are having a hard time or if you don't like to work within those little um, pots of paint that you have, you can grab um, and you don't have a palette, you can use a paper towel. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not true. Don't use a paper towel. <laughs> you can use a paper plate. Um, if you have like a plasticky kid's plate that you don't super care about, you could use that. Um, or you could use a palette or whatever you have. Or you can just paint right out of those pots of paint. You should be just fine. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to start with my blue paint. And I am going to start towards the bottom of my painting, which I don't typically do because I always get paint on my arm. But I want to make sure I have a nice roadmap for what I'm going to work within. So I'm going to start by creating my little hill on the bottom of my painting. And I'm just going to, let's see how big do I want about here. I'm just going to do sort of like a very stretched out S pattern. Just like that. That, now I know that this is going to be my hill, and I can make it even a little bit smaller. Mine's kind of big. I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller. But when we create a roadmap for ourselves, it can help kind of guide where we're going. That is what a roadmap does. And there's your vocabulary lesson for the day. <laughs> okay. So here's my hill. I've made it a little bit smaller. Alrighty, and we're going to start with our blue paint. Now we are going to use a lot of flicking motions when we paint this painting, and that is so that we can get these like jaggedy kind of lines that we have in our original. And to do that, I'm gonna start in my little space that I've created, and I'm just gonna do like a flicking up movement. And I'm gonna do various levels I don't want them all the same height. So I'm just doing short brush strokes in various height levels. And again, I'm using my bigger brush. I actually don't know if I said that, so I don't know why I'm saying again, but I'm starting with my bigger brush. This painting, I'm not gonna use my smaller brush that much. I'm gonna use my bigger brush for almost everything. Not actually everything, but almost everything. And again, we wanna make sure that we're creating levels. If you wanna give yourself like kind of a baseline and then you can move up from there, you can always go in and make um, spaces taller, um, but it's very difficult, especially with this dark blue paint, to um, cover it up. This paint is sort of like the, um, it's like the immortal paint. <laughs> it is hard to cover. It is, um, it has a really great color payoff, but it is just, it's hard to, hard to camouflage when you've made an oopsie. All right. So there is my bottom part of my winter sky. While I've done this and while I'm on this color, I'm going to make sure that I'm paying attention to the sides of my canvas because when we hang this on the wall, we are going to want those sides to be um, painted so that it looks like one cohesive piece. So I'm just tilting my canvas to each side and trying to match where I've left off here. Just like that. Okay, there is that bit. Since I still have some, I'm still working on blue, I'm going to come up to the top of my painting and I'm gonna start working my way downwards. So because I know the whole top of my moon is gonna be covered, I'm just going to give that a little outline. Because like I said, this blue is hard to cover up. If I get blue in my moon, that is gonna be really difficult for me to cover with white paint. So I'm just, that's why we've created our little quor quarantined space. And I can't think of what that word is, Quar quadrant? I'm gonna stop trying because I'm clearly failing. Um, but we've created our little safe space here. Safe space, that's good. All right, so I'm just gonna do the same kind of thing that I 
did on the bottom. And I'm actually going to flip my canvas upside down because look at my arm. I already have blue paint on it. Um, if you are not a actual monster like me who gets paint on every inch of their body while they're painting, um, <laughs> then you don't, you know, you don't necessarily need to move your canvas around. I like to move my canvas around because I feel, especially when I'm not painting on an easel, um, first of all, because I'm a mess of a human and <laughs> secondarily because I, um, you know, especially for something like flicks, I just feel like I get a better move uh, movement in my brush when I'm going in an upwards motion. So for me, I'm going to move my canvas around. Um, if you feel like you have good control and you're comfortable going either way, live your life. I'm not going to judge you. Okay. So you can tell I'm doing a little bit less on the top than I did on the bottom. Um, and that's just because in this version of this painting, I think I want a little bit more pink and green. So I'm doing that now. I've just made that decision willy nilly. Uh, apropos of nothing. And I'm going to do my edges. So I've matched the curve of my moon as much as I can. And then I'm going to fill in the whole top of my canvas here. And then I'm going to match the side as well. There we go. And there we have it. Okie dokie. I'm going to clean my brush. Now, this is, you're going to learn right here that this blue paint is pretty difficult to get off of your brush. But look how pretty my water looks now. Mm, it's beautiful. Um, this paint can be kind of difficult to get off your brush. It's okay if you don't have 100% of the paint off the brush, um, as long as it's mostly off. If it bothers you, which I can relate to because I everything bothers me, I'm a perfectionist. Um, if it bothers you, you are more than welcome to pause the video, run over to the sink, or walk, you know, follow the rules of your house. Um, <laughs> and don't get injured, um, and just rinse the brush out in the sink. When I clean my brushes in the sink, I cup my hand under the water, and I just roll my brush in the crook of my, is that a crook? Whatever, in the little cup I've made, until the water runs nice and clean. So I'm, you know, marginally happy with what I've done here in regards to cleaning this brush. It's not perfect, it's gonna be fine, we're gonna live. Um, I'm gonna go move into my pink paint now, and, um, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint because remember this thick paint is beautiful in regards to color payoff, brutal in regards to consistency, yikes, consistency. Okay, once I have a little more of a soupy texture, soupy is my word of the day. I recorded another painting today and I used soupy like 20 times. I'm not, I don't feel great about it, but that's what happened. Okay. I've got my pink. I'm ready to go. I'm going to start adding my pink to this top area here. And then the green's going to come around the bottom. So for pink, I'm going to flip my canvas over again. And I'm going to start using that flicking motion to integrate the pink into the spaces left behind on the blue. And not all of your um, blue paint is gonna be perfectly dry. So there's gonna be like a purpley section where they mix and that is great. We are fine with that. Okay. Uh oh, sirens in my neighborhood. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it. I live close to a fire station, so we get siren sounds a lot. Alrighty. And I am not getting too worried about um, my levels on the bottom yet. I'm just working on the integration of my pink to blue transition. 
and just trying to make that look natural. Okay, now that I have that, I can start playing with my levels and I'm gonna flip it back around. Um, now I can come around the side of my moon And I'm just using that flicking movement and remembering that I want different levels of thicker, thinner areas. And if you want to, I have so much paint on the brush. This is an important tip that I've just not listened to, <laughs> which is we don't want a lot of paint on our brush. If we have a lot of paint on our brush, um, then we get globby bits and globby bits are not cute. Um, so we're going, so just a little bit of paint is better. Less is more. Um, that's my motto in paint and you know, otherwise. Um, and that's gonna really help us control our flicks of paint. Sometimes when I'm like concentrating, I can't make words happen at the same time. So apologies. <laughs> Today is one of those days. And I'm just making sure that like any areas where there's like, uh, where, you know, new color is meeting old color, that it looks really um, even and natural transitions. I want to make sure that, you know, you don't have like, a big purpley chunk and then it doesn't look like that integrates nicely into my pink area. Okay. So there's my pink. And then again, let's not neglect the edge here. So where we had pink, oops, sorry, my hand was right in the way. We're gonna add pink. And at this point, you can come in and kind of fix anything. Um, making sure there's no white spots showing up. If you wanna bring down any of that blue color into the pink, this is a good opportunity to do that. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of a lower bit here. Yeah, I think that looks good. And I'm just trying to imagine all the white part being this tealy green color. So thinking about where I want to add longer pink bits is kind of just imagining all of this white bit to be that teal color. So I'm gonna clean my brush. Um, again, you know, it doesn't have to be the most perfect cleaning of all time, but just, you know, mostly clean. I think that's pretty good. Look how pretty my water looks now. It's beautiful. <laughs> all right. And then we're going to go into the green with some water, mixing it in to create just a little bit of a smoother, um, you know, looser texture, soupy, if you will. And then I'm just gonna try to offload some paint because I don't want big globs of paint again. Okay, I'm gonna start over here where the moon is. And I'm going to, that was not quite enough water. All right, and you can tell it wasn't quite enough water because when I went to brush it, it didn't go on smoothly. Even now, I feel like that's not quite enough. There we go. All right. Come up to the edge here, and then I'm going to start my flicking. And at this point, your blue paint will probably be mostly dry on the bottom. So it's not going to integrate into the green paint quite the way the pink did. Um, into the blue. So what I try to do for this part is just try to meet the blue where it is instead of trying to blend it like we kind of did up here. And a little overlap is fine. 
we're not mad at that. Um, but just trying to, you know, meet it where it is instead of trying to create a transition of pink to blue or of green to blue, I'm sorry. And if you want to um, use your smaller brush in some of these little nooks and crannies, uh, by all means, you may do that. The medium size, or sorry, sometimes this size brush is a medium size brush, so I call it that. Um, the brush that I have happens to have kind of a rounded point. Um, some of you might have more of a square shaped brush. Um, so if you have a square shaped brush, let me see if I have one here. Um, so this is not a young at art brush, but you'll see this is kind of an angled square shaped brush. So when I'm doing my flicks, I want my brush to be, um, you know, long ways so that I can do my flicks and create a nice smooth transition like this. And if I have a brown one, I'm sorry, a round one, I want to use just the tip of that rounded edge to create my flicks. So that's kind of how I would do it with different brushes. And again, we're just sort of like meeting it where it is. And filling in that gap. And if you go over the gap, like that's totally fine. It's going to create sort of a, an, a layered look and that we're not mad at that at all. We're not mad at anything today. And just that like rolled flicking movement is gonna really help us create those peaks on the ends of our brush strokes. Fill that big space in there. I love this color combination. I don't know if it's like the 80s kid in me, but this like, you know, kind of brilliant, this, this color is called brilliant, this color is called brilliant blue, but this kind of like royal blue color with the teal and the hot pink, like that's my jam. That's my 80s girl jam. Where's my, my hair scrunchie and my tube socks? That's all I need in these colors, please. <laughs> but anytime we do a color combination like this, I'm always like, yes, it's my favorite. So pretty. And again, I'm just taking my time using short flicking movements to create those peaks and tips. And if you need to add more water at any point, go for it. Um, you know, if your paint isn't coming off of your brush easily, you need to add a little bit more water. I've already had to do that a couple of times, so you're not doing anything wrong. These thicker paints, again, um, they have such a nice color payoff and they're, they're a great quality paint, uh, but they, you know, they do take some, you know, there's a learning curve to using them, I think, for the first time. So if you're not used to it, it might take a little bit, a few times to, to figure out how to make that work for you. That's okay. All right, we're getting there. And then we're gonna come around and do our edges. So we're gonna match up our moon as best as we can. And fill in that edge. And then the other side. There we go. 
okay, that's our background. It's pretty good. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm actually feeling like I wanna add a little bit more pink to my pink layer, um, just for like a slightly bigger color payoff there. So I'm gonna come back in and just, um, you know, hit that area again a little bit. And I'm not getting crazy, I'm not really adding anything new. I'm just kind of bumping up that color. Especially because that teal came out so nice and bright and I really want my pink to have a similar effervescence. <laughs> I love that sound of a paintbrush like kind of scraping on the canvas. Oh, it's such a great sound. All right. Oh yeah, I'm a lot happier with that. Great, okay, there we have it. Clean that brush. We're gonna let that section dry. And while it's drying, we're gonna do something that feel, two things that feel crazy. Thing number one, we're gonna work on our moon. Now, it's already a big white space. I realize that, but I am going to paint it white. <laughs> and because two reasons, number one, I want a nice smooth edge to my moon. So I'm going to cover up any pencil marks here. I'm going to cover up any mistakes. any kind of color bleeding. Okay, that's reason number one. Reason number two, I'm gonna create some texture by blending other colors into this. So I'm just gonna give a really quick and light cover of white to this moon so that I can add some other colors and textures. All right, so now I have my pretty little moon. She's beautiful. Make sure that edge matches up. I'm gonna add truly the teeniest dot of blue paint, so teeny. And I'm gonna kind of offload most of it. You can do it on your paper towel. Um, you can, if you have a paper, if you're using a paper plate, you can do it on a paper plate. Once I have that, I am going to, on the top edge of my can of my moon, do like sort of an outline. And let's follow it all the way around while I'm here. <laughs> and then I'm going to start adding some texture to my moon by just tapping my brush. And I'm gonna kind of do that all over. If it is too dark, just add more white. Clean your brush and add more white. From there, I'm gonna add a teeny tiny bit of pink to my brush, and I am going to start adding some pink towards the bottom. fix this bit here. All right, there's my moon. She's a beaut. I don't know if you can't see it that well. There we go. You can kind of see the different color variations in there. Okay, once I have that, I am going to take my brush, I'm not gonna clean it cause I'm gonna do something really similar. And I'm gonna add my nice clean edge on my hill here. 
and just like we did with the moon. I'm gonna take, uh, this is the only time I'm allowing you, <laughs> I'm advocating <laughs> for you to put a big glob of paint on your brush because we're just going to add a layer of white paint. Keep it in that space that you've created for your hill and then just a little bit of blue on the tip of your brush. Can you see that? A little bit of blue right on the tip. From here, I'm going to, following the lines of my hill, add some blue stripes to my hill, okay? Once I have that, I'm gonna add a little bit more white paint to my brush, and I am going to just blend over the top of that. This is giving our hill some depth, it's creating some movement. What you'll notice is as I've done that, I'm not going back and forth over it a bunch because I want to be able to see some of these lines. I want there to be sort of like, um, I'm bad at snow words because I hate snow. Um, like banks of snow, drift, drifts of snow, snow drifts. I actually am now really doubting if either of those words are true. But like, um, if it were sand, it'd be like a dune. <laughs> so maybe it's snow drifts. I don't know anything about snow. I don't like being cold. Um, so I want to be able to see some of those lines. And I want those lines to really mimic the shape that I've created for my um, hillside here. My snowy hillside that I will never be visiting. Um, and then as I blend it oh, like around the top, I am lightly going over it with white on my brush so that you can kind of see the white and the blue. There we have it. I think drifts is right, but there's nobody in with me now to confirm or deny what I've said. So now I just feel like a crazy person sitting in my garage painting a painting uh, with only my cat staring at me to tell me if I'm right or wrong about snow drifts or snow. <laughs> I know it's not snow dunes, so that's something. All right, and that is what the bottom of my canvas looks like. I'm gonna stop rambling about snow dunes. Okay, at this point, our background is done. Um, and we need to make sure that it's completely dry before we move on to our next, next step. So two options for you. Option number one, if you have a blow dryer, hair dryer, whatever you choose to call it, you can pause the video, um, take your blow dryer, hair dryer. That's what I'm going to do. I've got one right here and, um, make sure that your painting is all dry before we move on. If you do not have a blow dryer or a hair dryer, that's totally fine. Um, you are going to pause the video and wait two to five minutes for your painting to be completely dry. You can fan it with a fan. You can like wave it around, um, whatever you need to do. Or you can just go get a snack and wait for it <laughs> to dry before we go add our trees. Um, so I'm going to pause my video um, and you are going to pause your video. And whatever your choice is, you're going to wait for your painting to dry. I'll give you a tip. You'll know your painting is completely dry when it is not at all shiny. Can you see the shiny bits in that pink area specifically? It's all shiny when I move it around. When it's no longer shiny, all your paint is dry. All right, I'll see you in a couple minutes, friends. All right, friends, welcome back from your little break. I hope you had a nice time drying your paint or having a snack or whatever you did. We are ready to start adding our next step, which is trees. Now, the trees are gonna feel, I'm gonna say something crazy. I'm not gonna say something crazy, but this is the way we do the trees. Uh, first of all, we wanna make sure our paint brush is nice and clean, and indeed mine is. And I am going to start in, what color paint do you think? Everybody guessed green, but that's not true. We're gonna start in white. Because we have such a vibrantly colored background, we're gonna block out white spaces to create our trees, and then we'll put green over the top. So I'm gonna start with the white paint. And the way that I do trees is um, pretty, I think it's easy, but you'll have to be the judge for yourself. If you have a round brush, you're gonna do it a little bit differently than if you have a square brush. And I will show you both ways. So with my round brush, 
And I'm just angling my painting a little bit, but actually what I should do is angle my chair. That's better. Okay. With my round brush, I am just going to use the side to create the tops of my tree. So the top of my tr big tree, let's see, it's going to be right here. Well, maybe it'll be right here. And I am just going to use my paintbrush like a stamp to create my tree. And I'm sort of doing rows. to make my tree wider. And I'm gonna kind of give myself a road block here or a road map to how big I, I don't want my tree to be super wide. So I'm going to, I'm gonna say this is about as wide as I want my tree to be. And then I'm gonna fill the rest in with white, just like that. Now well, maybe I'll go a little wider. Okay, and we're just blocking out a nice, and this part does not have to look great because we're gonna put green paint over it. Um, but we do just wanna kind of cover up all that pink and teal. Um, and you actually, you don't even really, you can just kind of fill it in. Once you're in the middle part, you can kind of just fill that in. But you want the edges to have that stamped quality to it. Okay, and then because our tree goes off the edge, we do also want to go off the edge. Sound effects make everything better. Okay, that's our tree with a round brush. And I'm just, adding the texture here because I am a cuckoo person. Okay, if I have a angled brush or rectangular brush, I'm gonna do basically the same thing, except instead of using the side, I'm gonna use this edge here. Boop, 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 boop. And I'll show you with my smaller tree. Oh, now that I've painted on my hand, hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna put a small tree and a taller tree, so let's see. Small tree here. Okay, so small tree, just like this. So same basic idea, you're kind of using it like a stamp. The other thing you wanna think about while you're building your tree is like, you know, close your eyes, and picture, or if you can picture it with your eyes open, that's also a, a very nice skill. Um, picture what a tree looks like. A tree doesn't go like from here and then get like super wide typically. So as you're adding your layers, you know, you can make a few layers that are the same, you know, or just slightly thicker than your top layer. So that it's more of a long skinny isosceles style triangle than like a big, you know, what like a hut <laughs> okay so I'm gonna go back to my other brush so that's how you do it with each style of brush all right now I'm gonna do one more tree that's gonna be let's see about this tall and I you know you always want to be a little bit more conservative than you think you need to be so like I'm making this tree super skinny I'm probably gonna make it a little bit thicker by the time I'm done but again especially with a, a background like this it's gonna be really hard to fix if I've made my tree too big so you always want to make things a little smaller um, than you think you're going to want them and I actually am not super mad at how small that is but I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker just by adding another layer. So there we go. There's my trees. And I've got three trees. Great, not mad at that at all. Now I'm gonna clean my brush and um, I'm going to add, oh, a little bit more clean. There we go. I am going to start adding some green paint to my trees. And I'm gonna go back to the first one because it's the most dry. If it's not all the way dry, that's totally fine. We're gonna live. 
uh, add a bunch of green paint, not a glob, but just a good amount. And I'm going to just start going over exactly what I've done with my white or with my green paint. Just going to go right over the top of it. And you can see it's going to start blending a little bit and that's fine. We want that. You know, trees aren't just like one big globby green. They're all kinds of different colors. And so you can kind of work your green and white ratios um, however you want. Um, if you want to think about where your light is coming from, it's coming from the moon. So this side of your tree is going to be darker than this side of your tree. So if you want to, you know, concentrate some of your darker shades on that side of the tree and some of your lighter shades on this side of the tree, that is, you know, probably not a bad idea. Um, I say as a person who had that idea, <laughs> give myself a pat on the back here. Um, you know, more, most important at this point is getting your tree covered. Um, and just, we're just using that stamping method again. Now at this point you do have to stamp the whole way. You can't just start painting in because you're creating, um, oops, sorry. I just want to make sure I'm getting that edge. You're creating the tree's texture now. So you want to make sure that you, um, are using that stamping method all the way through. And when I get down to the bottom, I just flip my brush the other way so that I can get that kind of edge bit. So my tip of my brush is on the bottom. And just stamping away. And you can see every time I add paint, um, it creates a, you know an area that's a little darker and that's giving us some tree depth as well. Okay, there's my first tree. Pretty great, not mad at it. Um, I actually don't think I gave myself quite enough green paint. We'll make sure that you guys have enough green paint, but I always kind of, when I'm pouring my own paint, give myself a little less than I think I need. Because again, less is more, my motto. Okay, and I'm gonna move to my smaller tree now. And just right over the top and if there are like I don't know if you can see this in the video can you see like right here there's some white peeking through that's fine um, this is like a snowy winter scene and snow sticks to trees so you know it's to it's adding to the depth of your tree when there's you know some snow sticking to it and we're gonna add some more white as well so that we have some more snow sticking to it so I'm gonna make this smaller tree um, a little bit closer to us just by making it go down on our snow drifts. I've settled on drifts, by the way. Hopefully that's correct. Okay. Also, if you're like a snow person, no shade. I just, I'm from California and I get cold. All right, here we go. And I'm sorry that I've shamed you, shamed myself into not knowing what a hill of snow is called. I think it's a drift. I'm gonna let it go. Okay. Tree stamping, here we go. Filling up our trees. If they overlap a little, that's totally fine. We're not mad at that. Okay, now this part is gonna be optional, but I, I think I've mentioned that I am neurotically a perfectionist. So if you don't want to do this and you're happy with the way your trees look, um, please skip it. If you, like me, like to make things hard for yourself, <laughs> harder for yourself, um, I am going to add some white to my brush. I just gave my brush a quick rinse off. I didn't do a full clean. I'm going to add some white to my brush and I'm going to add some snowy bits on my tree. And to do that, I just barely have any paint on my brush and I am barely touching my tree. I'm also thinking about where each bough of the tree might be because that's kind of how snow settles on trees is on the boughs in kind of big drifty lines. So I'm thinking about that and I'm not trying to make it too 
crazy. Just a little bit of snow. Especially on this little guy. I'm also concentrating it on the right side. Sorry, I don't know my right from my left of the trees here um, because that part would be more illuminated by the moon. Again, if you are not interested in, in adding snow to the trees, by all means, skip it. Okay. And then I think I'm going to add a little more of a dark area on this tree. Make it so that really shows where our light is coming from. Give this guy a little bit more here. That guy's pretty illuminated. Okay, there's our trees, guys. Trees, check. Okay, switching over to our smaller brush. Remember I said we were barely gonna use it. Um, I'm gonna add our little uh, moon, I don't know what we would call those, moon rays. <laughs> I'm having like a rough terminology day, as it turns out. So a small brush in my white paint. When drawing, I'm sorry, when painting anything that needs a nice thin line, um, the best advice I can give you is this. The lighter you press, the thinner your line's gonna be. Um, I'm just gonna show you on my desk here because this paint is white and I can't show you on my palette. If I press down completely as hard as I can with my brush, my line's gonna be that thick. If I press as light as I can with my brush, it can be much thinner. Can you see that here, what I've done? Pressed as hard as I could, pressed as light as I could. Um, so to make really thin lines, I'm just gonna press as light as I can. And um, I'm just gonna go around and do like a circle, a segmented circle. And it doesn't really matter how many you do. They don't have to be even. The, the length of the lines don't have to be even. Um, they don't have to perfectly line up symmetrically. In fact, if they don't perfectly line up symmetrically, um, it might be better. Um, but I'm just going to do two layers of that. Okay, there's my moon lines. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the big fluffy snowflakes here. Got it, whoopsie, sorry about that guys. Forgot how to film for a second. To do those big fluffy snowflakes, I am going to use my bigger brush. I'm gonna clean it off and I'm gonna dry it off as much as I can. We're gonna kind of dry brush. So clean it off, dry it off tiny bit of paint, like truly the smallest amount, and offload as much as you can. You don't have to do it on the back of your hand like me. Um, I just, again, I'm a trash human. Okay, so t very small amount of paint, as dry a brush as I can get, and I am going to just barely touch my canvas to create those fluffy, kind of in the distance bits of snow. Barely any brush. I'm kind of like dry brushing to create those big fluffy bits. And you can do as few or as many of these as you wish, as long as they look kind of fuzzy and in the distance and you've done it right. I made that one kind of thick, so look. Oh, I created a system. If there's too much, you just dab it off with your finger. Oh, that was a great, why didn't I do that the first time? Go me. Not mad at that. All right. Or you could use a paper towel. If you're a parent and I've just convinced your kid to use their finger to brush paint off of a paintbrush or off of a painting, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, I feel bad about it. But it was a, it's a great system. It works great. Ooh, that looks so awesome. Okay. I'm very pleased with myself. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. 
fuzzy paint in the background, check. I mean fuzzy snow in the background. Let's do one right there. Okay, let's see two more steps and we're done friends. Um, alrighty, so we're gonna add some snowflakes in our, um, into our snowstorm. I'm gonna use the back of my bigger brush like a stamp, we love a stamp in this painting, in my white paint. And I am just adding stamped snowflakes. If you would rather have smaller snowflakes, you can use your smaller brush. I kind of like the big ones, so I'm using my big brush. Boop. Okay. All right, last step. Oh, I forgot to give myself yellow paint. That's an important part of this painting. You have yellow paint. I did not have yellow paint. Here we go, last step. Small brush, nice and clean. All right. So I am going to get some paint on my brush and at the tippy top of my tree, I am going to paint a small circle. Once I have that circle, I'm gonna take my brush starting at the inside of the circle and flicking outwards to create kind of a little starbursty bit on the top of my brush, on the top of my tree, I'm sorry. So drawing a little, painting a little circle, then starting in the inside of that circle and creating a little starburst. And last but not least, circle on the top, and then starting, I'm gonna turn this so you can see it a little bit better. Starting in the middle of my circle and flicking outwards. And there you have it guys. Congratulations, you have painted your very own version of the Winter Sky Painting. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I had such a great time. I hope you had a great time. I hope I'll see you in the next one. And thank you again so much for supporting Young at Art. Have a very happy holiday season. We'll see you next time. Bye.